So you had a video that showed you essentially how to remove background, add in graffiti, add a texture. And I just wanted to cover a couple of specific things with, with this image. So here is what my final image looked like. Here's my layers panel on the far right. I'm gonna hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the background layer to turn off everything else. So this is the original image. And then this is the background image that I have really scaled, right? I hit Command or Control T. I'll select that graffiti layer, hit Command or Control T for free transform. And you can't even see the whole bounding box. So I'll hit Command or Control Zero to fit it in screen. So you can see how large I stretch this because I want to get rid of these guys and the grass. So that's how I came up with that. And then I added a color balance just to get the entire uh, image with the same kind of warm color. And those are my settings, plus 68 and minus 30 on the blue. And then let me pull this up a little bit. And then I added a black and white layer to convert everything to black and white. Let me take a quick peek in there. And you can see in my black and white, I made some adjustments. So take a screenshot of that or write this down. You know, red's 40, yellow's 153, green's 40, cyan's 60, blue's 20, magenta's 80. That way you can quickly get my exact same setting without having to drag the sliders back and forth and figure out what we weird combination I used. And then I basically hit Command or Control J on the background layer. Remember, you got to select it. Hit Command or Control J, and and then you're going to get a background copy. And then I just drag it to the very top, just like that. And then I did Select Subject, Command or Control J, made a copy, drag it to the top. And all I did was come over here and choose Quick Selection Tool, choose Select Subject. And then I think I asked you to go up to the fourth step above the model. So if this is the first step uh, she's actually sitting on, that's one, two, three, four. So I'm going right there. I grabbed the polygonal lasso tool, held down the shift key. I get up already lost count. So this is one step, two, three, four. And I clicked right outside, kind of came across her leg and then came inside. And then I, because the steps are not even, they're not level, they're kind of little bowed from the wide angle lens. And I just kind of came outside, double clicked. So basically I got this entire selection. I added a layer mask, right? And it looks like I actually just deleted this layer mask and I applied it when it asked. So it gave me a transparent background. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it just as this layer mask. This will still work with this exact same control. Looks like I went back to this layer, hit select subject again, and just command jade the model to her own layer right here right it looks like i dodged right around her face area because she was a bit in shadow where the photographer didn't use a fill flash so i just brightened her up a bit and then i added a black and white adjustment layer and that's just a generic black and white nothing special and then i pushed everything to its own layer remember that command option shift letter e or, or control alt shift letter e to squish all these layers together to the very top layer and based on, I mean, look at it, it's got a bit more contrast and punch. Clearly, like look at this texture in the steps. Clearly, you know, I, I selected this layer. I went up to camera raw filter and it looks like I made some adjustments to clarity and texture. And I did a lot of stuff to really give it this kind of contrast and pop for the whole image, right? So you figured that part out to taste. Should look something like this. Doesn't have to look specifically like this. And then it looks like after I did all that, I'm gonna turn off this mask. So look at that. It looks like what I did, I'm holding the shift key and clicking on my mask so I can see what I did. It looks like I went back to this layer. Remember if you command or control click on a layer that has a, has an applied selection, like I could have clicked on the layer mask if I had left it, but it looks like I threw away the mask and let it apply. So I have these transparent pi pixels. If I just command or click on that, see how it loads a selection of just the model. And it looks like I just went up here to this layer and hit add layer mask while the select model was activated. And that's how I got that quick mask. And it looks like I did some custom dodging and burning on, on the model, right? Remember, see, watch, I'll turn this off. See, that's, it looks like the texture is being applied to the entire model. The adjustments I made in camera raw, see, that's the adjustments in camera raw. And I didn't want that much texture and clarity on her face. And see how it's bringing out all the dust and little white dots in her pants and it made her feet too dark. So I just kind of balanced that out. And then it looks like I applied a layer texture 
And then it looks like I did the same thing where I double clicked on the model to activate her selection, added a layer mask on the texture. So I'll turn that off. See, that's the texture applied with no layer mask and see how it it's too rough on the model. And overall, it looks too dark, right? So it looks like I added this layer mask with the color burn blend mode, right? And then the last thing is this group of text. And it looks like all I did was turn all this off. I just made a selection where on the step she's sitting on, right? This exact step she's sitting on. I just made a selection and I, I filled that selection with 50% gray. Remember you do that by going up to edit and fill. Let me get on a layer so it'll actually let me do something. Edit and fill. And I chose 50% gray, hit okay. It looks like I used a different blend mode. And then I used that same selection. Remember any layer that has transparency or a layer mask, if you command or control click on it, it's going to load that as a selection again, right? It looks like what I did is while that selection was active, I clicked back on this texture layer, making it most selected and hit command or control J and drag it above. So I just had that texture applied and I used the overlay blend mode at 100% just to really give it this look right here. And then I just typed the word cool and it looks like normal 100%. I'll double click on it so you can see my, if you resize your images, remember, because these images are, are downloaded fairly huge. So look at this, my whole file is almost a gigabyte. So if you don't have a ton of RAM and you notice your stuff is working slow, as I mentioned in the very, very beginning of the course, just resize all your images to about half size, to around 2,000 pixels on the longest dimension. It, it'd mean your font would, you know, be smaller than, than I've indicated, and some of these other settings would be less than, roughly half of what is indicated, because it's half the size. But anyway, except for color, of course. And then here I've attached the shades, and there's my settings right up here, but otherwise it's very straightforward. I didn't do any layering or anything like that. And that's the entire image for that one. Alt, click on the very background layer, which I put on the very bottom, which is the cemetery. I added the little girl, and obviously I just did a quick selection, select subject, refine the selection, and it looks like I deleted the mask, which it asks you, do you want to apply it? And you say yes, and it throws the mask away and leaves you these transparent pixels. You don't have to do that. That's just what I did. And then I added just a levels adjustment where it looks like I basically just reset the black point is what I think happened. Let me add another one and we'll see. Levels. Yeah, see how there's no black point? It's missing and this white isn't pulled all the way over. So I delete twice to get rid of that. So yeah. And then like, okay, then I then I decided it looks like the girl with the gas mask was too bright and so was the balloon. I just pulled her brightness level down. And I remember I had to do a little bit of very manual selection right around this balloon where it met this uh, headstone in the back to get that nice edge. And I think I did that with the elliptical marquee tool. Remember, whenever you choose that, if you hold down your space bar while it's active, you can move your selection around, then let go of your space bar and keep, keep resizing, moving it around until you get kind of where you need to be. See what I'm doing? And remember, while the space bar is held down, you can move it around. And then I just kept doing this getting it as close as I could get it and see if eventually I got like, oh my gosh, this is taking forever. So I just let it go somewhere and then I can move it manually like this, but I can't adjust it anymore unless, and this is what I did, I went up to select and down to transform selection. It gave me the same bounding box as a cropping tool. And remember, this is just gonna make it go bigger or smaller, right? But if you hold down the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac, it allows you to warp it, right? So then I can just kind of keep dragging all these four corners until it, it matches or matches enough. And then I went in and painted the mask based on that. And then I applied this color fill and you know how to do that. You, you know how to do that. You come to the little uh, fourth icon over that creates a new fill or adjustment layer. I went to the very top and added a solid color. And I've already shown you my, my settings for this, which is 25, 55, 236. And I chose a soft light blend mode. Then I went to type in alone. I used Arial Black, regular at 762, sharp. I used blue, and how I got that blue is, remember, you can always double-click on this text box. And there's the exact number. You can key in 20, 26, and 117, but I think I just went in somewhere around this dark blue area with my eyedropper and sampled it. And then 
click the checkbox to lock it down. And then it looks like I just put in that wordage, this stuff, and I inverted it so that it would hide, you know, I didn't have to make any complicated selections and then just used a screen mode. And that's all I did for that. And actually on mine, I'm just now seeing because I'm zoomed in a bit more. You see this edge? You don't want to have that edge. So what we'll have to do is I'll hit Command or Control L to manually shift the proportions of white to black. Because remember, this is now just white text on black. So what do I need to do? Do I need to make the, the white brighter? Well, I can, but I need to make the black darker. Do you see how that edge right here disappears? So that's all I'm doing, just increasing the contrast of the white and black of this particular wordage. And you'll have to do that on both posters. And that'll fix it. Click OK, Command zero to fit in screen, and that's how you get that image. Okay, this one. This one is really straightforward, really based solely off of the videos that you watched. I started with this straight up image, and then I loaded in this background, this background, and I noticed they were all coming in too bright. So for me, I added a blank layer and did a black to white gradient on the layer. Do you see? And see how much I faded it back. I faded it back 61% and used a multiply bit blend mode. For this one, I used a multiply blend mode and faded it back 45%. Now remember, I know it looks gray, but I drew, I drew you know, I, I chose gradient, I went up, chose basics, and I chose this black to white. And if you have default colors set up, your default colors will be right here, right? And I just drag until it's approximately like this. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll leave this one background toggled on. See, look, see it? It's just a little too bright. So that's why I added that. And so it's hard to see without having the, the background because remember, I'm sure I selected the, the original guy, jumped him to his own layer, and had, yep, here he is up here. And I let him be at the top all the time, right? So that's why he's he's way up there. I must have a sepia on somewhere. No. Nope. Oh, that must have been his original color. Oh, that was just his original color. So, and then I'm doing all the background layers in between, right? So here's with that background. And you're like, well, that doesn't look so good. So it looks like I've made some adjustments. Here's one. It's like this is getting rid of that. And that's on the wrong layer currently. There we go. So this layer was just getting rid of this little bright thing, this little spot retouching layer. And it still looks pretty odd, right? So there's probably some other adjustment at the very top that I've pushed up. Yeah, it looks like this is the very top layer. And if you're having trouble reconciling the tones and local and global contrast, I always suggest just putting a black and white layer at the very top whenever you're doing these kind of composites. And it's going to quickly, quickly give you the tonal relationship. So that's probably what informed me to do these adjustments that I'm doing let me take that. Yeah. See how bright that looks now that I've removed the color. So that's why I came in and did this to really focus a bit more on him. And, and that's really all I did for him. And I suggest you figure all this out before you worry about the text. Do the text at the very dead last. And I had to do a lot of free transforming on, on these background layers to, to make them big and centered and matching this format. And then I just turn on the next background. Notice how the other background totally disappeared. I'll select that second background layer, hit Command or Control T, and you can see what I did. Now, one thing, where's the lighting coming from that's hitting the fighter? It's coming from this direction, right? So this image that you originally downloaded was actually, if you right-click on it after activating the free transform, it was actually like this, but that doesn't work. You can't have this bright of a light on the darker side of the model. You've always got to match the global lighting of the scene. So again, I just right-clicked, flipped horizontal, so that it would kind of fit from what's going on. So that's how I repositioned and did that part. So basically, there's that image. And I forgot to show you the other one. Let me turn that on. So I turn that off, and I'll turn this off. So obviously, I need to turn off this little retouching layer for this one. And it looks like I haven't resized this one yet or repositioned it. So let me hit the Move tool and reposition it. I can't remember what was before. But you notice what was happening. It looks like on, on this one as well, I, I, I decided these two background layers needed this gradient, right? So that's why it has the gradient. And remember, once you get all this figured out, that's when you'll start saving them out. And I'll talk about that in just one second. So, but this one didn't need that. 
because it has this very specific bright lighting from the one side. So that's why I put this particular background layer above all these other adjustments. And it looks like I went ahead and applied another levels adjustment. Here's the guy that's been at the top the whole time. And then once I felt like I had everything done, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Let me notice I did retouch out this green hill thing on the shorts. I'm gonna be looking that you did that just to make sure you're watching this video. Also, I found it distracting to have Green Hill in three places. So now it's just on his belt and the movie title. So essentially, then I just added uh, Green Hill and Aerial Black at 584. Normal, 100% blend mode, nothing tricky. And remember, I just adjusted the kerning by opening the character panel, which you can find under Window and Character if you don't see it. But yours is probably over here by now. And then again, I just, uh, you can see my settings here where I adjusted the kerning and then added deathmatch and positioned it, you know, with my, you know, arrow keys. See how I can kind of adjust the spacing so that it's, it's got a, a direct line. Remember, you can pull a ruler. You can hit command or control R to turn these on. And then if you click inside here with the move tool, you can drag a line down so you can kind of see exactly where the line is to, to, uh, you know, adjust it for your design purposes. And then you can click and grab that and get rid of it. And then what did I do? It looks like I put in that movie poster wordage. And the same thing I noticed on my last one, I noticed here. Do you see that edge? So the way to fix that is to select it, hit Command or Control L. I know it's destructive, but we don't care. And we just want to pull in that contrast a bit on the black to make that line disappear. Click OK. Command Zero to fit in screen. And then as always, I put an additional black and white adjustment layer at the very top. All right, well, here we needed to because of this color one. But again, typically I always keep a black and white at the top for, for these kind of composites so I don't get so distracted by the color. And then it looks like I just gave it a color treatment of a sepia, and that's all you have to do. And then once you've done this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna save this out as whatever you, you name it, like fighter A, and then you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna turn off that background layer, and you're gonna save this as fighter B, and then you'll go down to this background layer and save this as fighter C or whatever numbering you need. And remember, when, when you are actually doing this for the final bit, if you see you need to do a little extra dodging or a little extra burning, you know, do whatever it is you need to do. Say, look, look at this image. I forgot to toggle on my retouch layer for this image because now I've got this distracting light post growing out of his head. So here's that retouching layer that's turned off. The way you can prevent yourself from doing that is you can select it and com command or control select that specific background and hit command or control G. So that way it's always together, right? So that way you just have to turn on the group and you can go into the group by toggling it open, but otherwise that kind of protects you a bit. Well, I hope this has helped for a quick walkthrough. Can't wait to see what you do. Take care.